Saturday with seniors. And we've got Shirley Alexander, 87 years old, joining us. And good morning, Shirley. It's great talking with you. I'm learning so much about your life was so simple, but so fun. Good morning. <laughs> yes, good I'm morning. glad to be here. <laughs> So we learned a lot about the simple things that you created in life without spending a lot of money. Tell me about as you got older growing up, how old were you when you got married and where'd you meet your significant other? I got married in 1955 and I met my husband at a dance. And like a Grange dance or? A, no, no. A it rock was, and roll dance were you a rebel? <laughs> well, we love to dance and my whole family liked to dance. Where did people go out dancing in, in, when you were growing up in the 50s and early 60s? They had the Grange Hall at Asaf, and that's where you went on Saturday night. You square danced, and sometimes you had a collar, and sometimes they used records, mm -hmm. 78 records. Do you remember live music anywhere? Did you go out to see? If, enter, we I'm, didn't go very far yeah. because we only had one vehicle, and my dad used that you know, for work. He raised beef cattle and horses, work horses, mm -hmm. and broke them. Now, how hard did your dad work? <laughs> Looking back at it, how many, how, how many hours a day or pretty much every minute he was awake? I can remember that there were three big meals a day. You got up early in the morning and there was breakfast after the chores were done and before school. And then at 12 o'clock, there was a big meal. And my dad would come in from the field to eat. And I'll never forget this. He would lie down on a studio couch that we had in the living room on his back, snore for 10 minutes. Exactly. You could time him. 10 minutes back up and out into the field and back in late in the evening for supper. I would say 15 hours a day they worked. Of hard labor work out there, yeah. Yeah, because it was all done with horses, you're, you're, like the Amish do now. Mm -hmm. So you were still working horses on your farm when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We never had a tractor. Wow. He, so My dad died in 51, and then my mother couldn't keep things up. Her yeah. health was starting to fail. I'd like to tell you about my mother. Go ahead, please do. She was a nurse. And of course, the nurses weren't trained then like they are now, you know, with the degrees and so on. She was more or less trained by the doctor. She took terminal patients for Dr. Prevo here in town, mm -hmm. and she would go home with them to die, the people who were able to pay for a nurse. Yeah, she would provide almost a hospice type service to, to help them. Yeah, she them. would give them their shots that they needed, their medication, mm -hmm. until they died under his supervision. So she wasn't working all the time. However, yes. some people lived for five or six months or maybe even longer. and uh, But she would stay with them 24 hours a day. Wow. So comforted a lot of people in their final days. Sounds like a nice person. <laughs> she was a lovely woman. Yeah, Gertrude Heatwell. I don't know if anyone would remember I'm her. sure somebody does. Probably. <laughs> So you did your schooling. I wanted to ask you about that. Did you go to a one-room schoolhouse? Two rooms. Oh, you we had, went to Amazonia. You got the biggest schoolhouse of anybody I've talked to yet so far in this yeah, program. Two rooms. The family above us went to Sherman School, which was a one-room school, and they had to walk over the top of the mountain there to school. It was a good mile or more, and the wind just whips around on top of that mountain. We were down in far enough that we couldn't walk to that school. Fortunately, the school bus came right up to our house and picked us up. So there were school buses in their 40s? It was a bus. Okay, not... <laughs> was, I'll tell you what the bus was. It Gus, was called a bus. <laughs> it was called a bus. Yeah, Gussie Munson, he and his wife, one or the other, always drove it. It was a car that they used to haul pallbearers in from the funeral home, so it had three seats up front. Mm -hmm. And then a, a pull-down seat in the middle and then the, the back seat. So, of course, that would handle as many kids as... It, yeah, no seatbelts then, just no, slide them across no, the no, bench uh, like the dugout. Pile them in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you had to sit on someone's lap, that was okay. Yeah. You know, and of course, in the front, they piled them in, too. But he was the neatest guy. He always was singing. And his wife, the same. But I can remember coming up the hill there from where the uh, access to the rails to trails is now. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, up Route 362. The 362 yep. up that hill. And of course, these old cars were rear wheel drive and sometimes you had half worn out tires on them. Mm -hmm. And he would always tell us, okay, kids, let's all help and we would all you know rock he'd have us car. all rock and and we thought we were really pushing that car up the hill <laughs> Got you all. He, was, he was a neat guy because <laughs> you know he just had things like that to entertain it was a different time then if you had trouble getting up the hill i'm sure somebody would stop and and oh yeah and help you oh, that was yes. just the you know well the, way and it the was. neighbors help neighbors yeah. well when you lived up by thumbtown how often did a car go by when you were a kid growing up a couple a day oh everybody ran to the window it what? was that rare that you had a car that everyone oh, run to the window oh yeah there. yeah everybody ran to see who was going by but i have to tell you the cccs i can remember the ccc camp there at darling run yep there's a, the, there's the a camp there's now a they, down there now with old they're pictures. making some yeah, kind of a thing. camp place yep. which i'm glad they're doing that mm -hmm. because a lot of the history is lost without it so the ccc's truck came up by our place to go to harrison lookout when they built those pavilions over there mm -hmm. there's one big pavilion at harrison that they built yeah yep. at colton point they built more than they did it and they cleaned up the forest around and got rid of the rattlesnakes, which upsets me now they protect <laughs> them. <laughs> life, you can go pet them for goes a on. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can pet your rattlesnakes if you want. So, so the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon really wasn't, a, it wasn't even called the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon when you were growing up. It was it was a ditch in the ground and- No, I mean, we, it, they called it- Did was, they still refer to it then? Yes. We hiked, and that's another thing. When I was a kid, we hiked to Harrison Lookout every Sunday afternoon. That was our entertainment for mm -hmm. Sunday afternoon. We would leave home, hike to the canyon, go down the turkey path, which was really a turkey path then. <laughs> Just a little. No wooden steps then no, to get down. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> go down the turkey path. Summer and winter, we did this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we would slide on the ice down the yeah. falls in the canyon. And none of you ever broke a leg or anything? Never broke a leg or anything. <laughs> kids are like rubber back then. You didn't... I guess. <laughs> we drank a lot of milk. Okay. <laughs> <Our> bones were <laughs> strong. <laughs> yeah. Unhomogenized milk, right? No, fresh, no, from fresh from the couch. <laughs> so. And uh, Shirley, I think we're getting a little tight on time here. So I think we're going to wrap up. But any closing remarks? Any last thoughts about your generation and ours and your growing up? Personally, and I hope that you will remember your generation too the way I do, I feel like I lived in the best generation that you could. We enjoyed one another. We loved each other in the home. We read a lot of books, especially the Bible. We learned to read from the Bible. And uh, your generation, every home had a family Bible in it, right? right? And that you took, right. it was common, right, in the, right where everyone could see it and use it. And, and everybody that's... used it, yeah. And we had devotions every day at home. And we had a lot of love. We didn't have a lot of material things, but we had a lot of love and a mother and father who really cared for us. Sure. And was with us all the time. Yep, and I got the feeling you just always seem to be smiling, so I'm going to guess one of your important things in life is just, just keep on keep smiling, happy. too. Yes. Be happy with what you have in this world, not what you, don't be frustrated with what you don't have. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Thank you. Well, thank you, Shirley Alexander, our guest today on Saturday with Seniors here on KC 101.